As a scholar of the history of narrative, my life changed in the early 1980s when my student showed me Eliza. Please tell me your problem. What's this all about? Eliza was a program written by Joseph Weizenbaum in the late 60s to mimic a comically rigid psychologist who mostly echoed back what was said to her. Wouldn't that be like talking to another human being? If you could have a perfectly natural dialogue, it's a very big if. To Weizenbaum's amazement and dismay, people related to this clever pattern-matching program as if it were an actual person. Well, wouldn't you worry? Without realizing it, Weizenbaum created a prototype for what would become a key building block for interactive narratives. Shall we play a game? The conversation between a computer-based character and a human being. Good evening, Dave. How are you doing, Hal? Eliza turned the viewer into an interactor. Wish I could touch you. Creating the experience of dramatic agency, which is the pleasure we feel when we can actively engage with the fictional world. Storytelling traditions are reused and elaborated over time by other practitioners. I love to give the example of how the Shakespearean soliloquy arose from a crude theatrical device of the violent revenge plays of the period, the villain turning to the audience and saying, I'm going to kill that guy. Not a lot of examination of the human condition. But in Shakespeare's hands, it becomes the occasion for Hamlet to bring the audience into the profoundly solitary mind of the newly self-aware modern man. To be or not to be. Shakespeare's new building block is the basis of the new digital building block of the confession cam or video blog. But to my mom, the only thing that matters is that I'm single. Similarly, movies begin as photo plays with a stationary camera and acting styles taken from the melodramatic stage of the 19th century but they become expressive with the invention over time of what we now take for granted as the language of film. The tracking shot, rack focus, acting for the camera, all of these foundational building blocks which allow us to enter more deeply into the fictional world. Will we someday see the equivalent of Hamlet on the holodeck? A digital story that will be comparable in profundity to Shakespeare's masterpiece, but interactive and immersive like the Star Trek virtual reality chamber? We seem to be headed in that direction. Perhaps the most exciting place right now to see the emerging conventions of a future holodeck is the accelerating convergence of digital television with websites, social media, and games. Digital formats have made TV more immersive, with viewers expecting consistency across multiple seasons and examining every episode in detail. We have a lot of questions for you, Vince. We're going to pin you down and force uh -oh. you to spit out answers. The complexity of long-form TV has outpaced our ability to keep track of what's happening on these programs, sending people looking for new ways to navigate and annotate the stories which I believe will lead to new conventions for following individual threads and catching viewers up on backstory. Writers are collaborating more closely with storytellers from the game industry, allowing viewers to become interactors within clearly defined spaces in the same story world and with the same moral physics. Like the language of film and TV, the language of video games is now transparent to us and can be employed to enter more deeply and empathetically into a wider range of human experience. Experience of dramatic agency can be used to create a sense of immediacy and emotional identification with people in highly particular circumstances, like an African refugee, a preoperative transsexual, a bureaucrat in an oppressive regime, or a drone pilot moving between suburban domesticity and dropping bombs by remote action. These games can seduce us into engaging with situations we might otherwise look away from. And they can offer us the opportunity 
to reflect on our own values. And because games are replayable, they implicitly pose the question, how could this turn out differently? Why do we need a new genre of storytelling? It's not a matter of more thrilling entertainment, but of stretching human capacities. I believe that we have reached the limit of what we can understand about the world by unisequential formats such as books, movies, and TV shows. As a culture, we are collectively creating the building blocks of a radically new genre of storytelling that allows us to take multiple points of view and to repeat the same scenario to compare alternate possibilities. We're doing this because we desperately need such interactive and immersive stories in order to make sense of the world we live in.